Okay, so now we have three problems. I'm going to do 13, 14, and 15. These all involve some special trig limits that you often encounter in a calculus course. The reason why people care about these limits, why they're important, so let me write them down. This is what I'm going to use. So there's one that says the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x, that equals 1. There's another one that says the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 minus cosine x over x, that equals 0. The reason why these end up being important, these two limits, is because usually right after limits you start talking about derivatives. And to justify some of the derivative formulas, well, derivatives involve limits. And when you start talking about derivatives of trig functions, these limits magically appear, and you end up having to use them. So that's, that's why people in calculus start talking about them. It's not like they're just like, hey, here's some, some random limits to torture you with. They end up having a use. OK. So sine 2x over 7x. This one is probably, in terms of the trig limit ones, this is probably one of the more straightforward ones. So. Okay, so the idea is, I'm going to write it more generically. So we've got the limit as x approaches 0. You can really have sine of any number multiplied by x. Any multiple, any number times x. 2x, 3x, 4x, 5x, 10x. But the idea is you want that same number in the bottom. That same expression. So if you have 10x here, you want 10x here. If you got 20x here, hey, you want 20x here. If that happens, you still get 1. I could do the same thing up here. It could be cosine. If it was 2x, I would want 2x. If it was cosine of 10x, I would want 10x. So keep that in mind, because I'm going to use the same idea in just a second. Okay, so sometimes I like to just break this up. Okay, so I've got sine of 2x. Now, a couple things here. I think, eh, okay, I've got a 2x on top. What do I want underneath here? Well, if I've got a 2x here, I want a 2x here. Well, I've got an x already in the denominator. I've already got an x in the denominator, so there it is. I'm going to use it. I don't want the 7 underneath here. I'm just going to put it over here. Okay. I mean, if I multiply in the denominator, I still have 7x. You know, if you imagine there's a 1 on top, you still have the sine of 2x. What do I want down here? Well, the thing I want is I want a 2. Well, now I just multiplied the denominator by 2, which means I have to multiply the numerator also by 2. And that's it. Now you're almost there. So this first limit, the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of 2x over 2x, that's this result. It says this limit is just going to be 1. You're multiplying that by 2 over 7. So your answer is 2 over 7. All there is to it. So again, the thing is, I'm trying to make, you know, some of these may feel like you're just kind of inventing stuff. Whatever's sitting next to the sign, 10x, 12x, 50x, I want 10x, 12x, 50x in the denominator. I'm trying to make that appear. Okay. Let's keep going. Number 14. I've got the limit as x approaches 0 of sine squared of 3x. Sine squared 3x, okay. I'm going to rewrite that, sine of 3x multiplied by sine of 3x. Again, you don't have to do this. Maybe it would make it a little bit clearer. So I start thinking, you know, maybe I'm going to do this thing where I make a couple different fractions. Well, sine of 3x, underneath, it, underneath that fraction, eventually I would want a 3x. And if I break it up underneath this one, I would also want a 3x. So I need some x's down here. Well, I look at this and I say, oh, x to the third minus x. At first, I would think, you know, I could, I could factor an x out of there. That would feel like the natural thing to do. I could factor out x, have x squared minus 1, but that's not enough x's. I need an x and an x. I really need an x squared. Well, I'm just going to still factor out x squared from that expression. So x squared multiplied by what is x to the third? Well, just x. This is the part that kind of sometimes confuses people. x squared multiplied by what is x to the first? There's two ways you could think about it. You could think about it as being, well, x to the negative first, or likewise, 1 over x. Because if I distribute this, I'll have x squared, I'll have x to the third minus x squared over x. x squared divided by x simplifies to 
x. Okay, so this is not a you know in a sense uh, uh, you know when we factor we don't usually factor like this right we we would just pull out x to the first. There's absolutely nothing incorrect about doing this. That's the moral of the story. You can still do this. Okay. Why did I factor it this weird way? Again, I recognize that I want an x underneath sine of 3x, and I realize I'm going to want another x underneath the other sine of 3x, which means I'm going to need two x's, by which I mean I'm going to need an x times an x, or an x squared. So I'm going to rewrite this. I've got sine of 3x. So we have still got the limit as x approaches 0. There's my sine of 3x. I've got x squared. There's one x. There's another x. There's my x squared. The thing that I've left out here is my x minus 1 over x. So I'm just going to put it over there. Okay. I'm going to do a couple steps at once here. So right now, if you multiply this out, I still have sine squared of 3x over x squared multiplied by x minus 1 over x, which is what we had right before. So again, what do I want? I need a 3 down here. Well, that means I need to multiply the numerator by 3 somewhere as well. I also need a 3 for the, 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 this middle factor. So let me multiply that by 3, which means I, I need to multiply by another 3. Now, the limit as x approaches 0 of sine 3x over 3x, that's the little result we just wrote down a second ago. This limit is going to go to 1. This limit's going to go to 1. Okay, so we've got 1 times 1. Let's start looking at the limit as x approaches 0. Okay, we would have 9 on top over x minus 1 over x. So we still have to compute that one. The problem is, right, if I plug in 0, I'm going to get 0 minus 1 over 0, and that's undefined. So I've got to be careful there. To me, the easiest way to do this is just to get rid of the denominator. If I multiply the denominator by x, I'm going to get rid of that uh, 1 over x. Well, if I multiply the denominator by x, I also have to multiply the numerator by x. So 1 times 1 times this limit, that's just going to equal the limit as x approaches 0. I've got 9x on top. If I distribute, I would have x squared. x multiplied by 1 over x, that's going to be x over x or minus 1. Hey, what a great thing, because now I can plug in 0. I'll get 9 times 0 over 0 squared minus 1. That's going to be 0 over negative 1, which is 0, which is going to be your answer. All right. Again, it feels like, you know, why on earth are you doing that? But again, I think I discussed a couple times what got me started, so, so consider that. All right. Same thing. Now I see this 1 minus, in, in number 15, I see this 1 minus cosine of 2x over 7x. The same thing. If I had 1 minus cosine of 2x over 2x, and x is approaching 0, that limit's going to be 0. So this is going to be kind of similar to 13 in the sense that I'm going to make that appear. So I've got the limit as x approaches 0. I'm going to do my same little thing of breaking up my fraction. Okay, I don't want the 7 underneath there, so there's the 7. I'm going to move it over. I do want the x underneath there, so there's my x. Well, I've got 2x here. What do I want down there? I want 2, so I'm going to multiply by a 2 here. But since I do it in the denominator, i got to do it in the numerator as well. Well, now we're done. If we take the limit as x approaches 0 of this 1 minus cosine 2x over 2x, that's going to be 0 multiplied by 2 over 7. We get 0, and we're all finished. So, again, you can certainly see, you know, there's certainly limit problems involving trig that can be more difficult than this. So I don't want you to think that this is the uh, end-all, be-all of how difficult trig limits can be. But again, just a handful to, to sort of remind you on maybe some ways to approach them. So, all right, in our last video, I'm going to do 16, 17, and 18, and we will be finished with our little set of, of limit problems.